to the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival protected by the tall Banega Swast India at the Jan Mikhalski Foundation Baitak. We are delighted to introduce our next session, Poetry Hour, Streaming the Multiverse. And this session is presented by ABP Live. Can we please have on stage our speakers for the day? Sudeep Sen, Paramita Satpati, Devendra Bisaria, Kala Ramesh, Jitendra Kumar Soni, and Lakshya Datta. The session will be moderated by Mr. Lakshya Datta, who is a writer and podcast producer. He is the founder of Launchora, a storytelling platform and narrative podcast company, home to 240,000 storytellers and 15 podcast shows. He also hosts Jaipur Bites, the Jaipur Literature Festival's original podcast. He was named India's top podcaster of 2021 by Geo Savan. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming to our final Poetry Hour at the Jaipur Literature Festival 2022. It's our fourth session. The days go by so quickly, and there is a, a mountain of empty coffee cups behind us so far on day four. Uh, the format for our session is fairly simple. We have five amazing poets who are going to be reading uh, from their books and their poetry in their original languages. And uh, they're each going to have about nine-ish minutes. And uh, we're going to start right now. Our first poet, I'm going to introduce him, and then we're going to play a little clip. So our first poet is uh, Sudeep Sen. Prize, his prize-winning books include Postmarked India, New and Selected Poems, Rain, Arya, Erotext, and Anthropocene, Climate Change, Contagion, Consolation, among others. He has edited influential anthologies, including the HarperCollins Book of English Poetry, World English Poetry, and Modern English Poetry by Younger Indians. Sen's work has been featured in The Guardian, Financial Times, Harvard Review, Times of India, and India Today, and various other platforms, including BBC, CNN, AIR, etc. Sudeep is the first Asian honored to deliver the Derek Walcott Lecture and read at the Nobel Laureate Festival. A hand of applause for Sudeep. And can we play the clip, please? After a long concert and after dinner, I find myself unexpectedly with you in my room. In this new space, finding oneself is wonderful. I was here and not here at the same time. Later I felt as if I had entered a story of an old familiar novel, a character I knew but had not met in flesh until now. Winter's dream. Our mattress is the wide ocean, the crushed sheets, the waves. We sail together full blown. But during your long absences as our ships are docked on different shores, sometimes the bed 
dreams. I imagine the wet breaking the anchor loose, defying gravity, current and electricity as photons propel and burn even the wild salted expands into a monument, a desire permanent like the ocean bed its pulses uncontrollably rocking the waters, the bodies the dreams. Silence has its own subtle color. Between each breath pause, heat simmers latent saliva, tongue entwined lisp. Here and there, errant clouds wait yearning for rain, desire melting even silence to words. Words color bleed incarnadine as your lips whisper softly the secrets of your silence. Your fine chicken blouse, white, sheer, and almost transparent, cannot hide the quiet of your heartbeat on your wheat olive skin. The milk white flower adorning your hair sheds a solitary petal, just one in that petal Silence blooms color. White, transparent white. Pure white silence. It's really lovely to see all of you again, many familiar faces. And uh, I've attended every poetry bat hook here. This is my favorite. Of course, I'm terribly, terribly biased. And it's a real treat to read with four really fine poets. So thank you for being together. And the two poems, I was going to read three, but I'm going to cut it down to two, um, are dedicated to the four of you. And you all. Uh, this one is disembodied. I read this two days ago at the launch of this book, Anthropocene, which is on climate change, um, contagion, and consolation. But uh, some of you in the audience wanted me to read this again, so I'm just reading it again. And so bear with me if you've heard this before. And it's set in Delhi, which is my home city. Disembodied. My body carved from abandoned bricks of a ruined temple, from mineral shards of an old mosque, from slate remnants of a medieval church apse, from soil tilled by my ancestors. My bones don't fit together correctly as they should. The searing ultraviolet light from Aurora Borealis patches and etch corrects my orientation. Magnetic pulses prove potent. My flesh sculpted from the fruits of the tropics, blood from coconut water, skin colored by brown bark of Indian teak. 
my lungs fueled by Delhi's insidious toxic air, echo asthmatic sounds, a new vinyl dub remix. Our universe where radiation germinates from human follies, where contamination persists from mistrust, where pleasures of sex are merely a sport, where everything is ambition, everything is desire, everything is nothing, nothing and everything. White light everywhere, but no one can recognize its hue. No one knows that there is color in it, all possible colors. Body worshipped not for its blessings, but its contour, artificial shape shaped by Nautilus, skin moistened by L'Oreal and not by season's first rains, skeleton strength not shaped by earthquakes or slow molded by fearless forest fires. Ice caps are rapidly melting, too fast to arrest glacial slide. In the near future, there will be no water left or too much water that is undrinkable, excess water that will drown us all. Disembodied floats afloat like Noah's Ark. No GPS, no pole star navigation, no fossil fuel to burn away, just maps with empty grids and names of places that might exist. Already, there's too much traffic on the road. Unpeopled hollow metal shells without brakes swerve about directionless looking for an elusive compass. And I'll read one more poem. It was not on my list, but uh, the last session, uh, a poet I admire greatly was mentioned, Aga Shahid Ali, who I think is one of our finest English language poets, sadly no more. Uh, this poem echoes uh, two or three lines from his very early book, um, uh, A Country Without Post Office. So, it's for you. It's called Om, A Ceremony. And um, it opens with a little epigraph by Gethe, and I quote, architecture of frozen music. In my city, I'm surrounded by constant cries of the dying, burning pyres heaving under, heaving under burden of wood, smoke, and bones, wailing summed up by the sonic notes of Om. Civilization's first sound, Sanskrit syllable, echoing a conch shell's harmonic mapping, its involute spiral geometry holding within and emanating airborne sonar screams. My ancestors, grandmothers, mother, blew into the smooth shell cupped in their palms, held intimately as if it were a talisman, a prayer, a pranayam in yoga's daily ritual. But breathing is such a privilege these days. Pandemic struck, oxygen deprived, my friends perish, the country buckles airless. Even an exquisite ceremony lacks the sheen or wax to wrap the contours of a corpse now. Each day as I write endless condolence notes, etching dirge-like couplets on gravestones. My city continues to be dug up, not to make space for burial sites, but for palaces of illusion. An architecture of frozen music, greed, calumny. A country without a government, 
A country without a post office, Shahid laments. Let me cry out in that void, say it as I can. I write on that void. Om's celebration now, an unceasing requiem. Yet we chant in hope for peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you. Thank you, Sudeep. Our second poet tonight is uh, Paramita Satpati. She's an influential voice in uh, Odia literature with 20 books published to her credit. Her works have been extremely tra uh, extensively translated to other Indian languages. Prominent among those are Intimate Pretense, A Boundless Moment, and Colors of Loneliness, Durka Pahar, and Chandan Ke Phool. Did I, was it supposed to be Durka Pahar or Durka Pahar? <laughs> Sorry. Paramita has received the prestigious Sahitya, Sahitya Academy Award, Bharatiya Bhasha Parishad Yuva Puraskar, and Assam Sahitya Sabha Samman, among many others. Paramita ji, the stage is yours. Good evening, all. Uh, welcome to this refreshing uh, session of uh, poetry. Must be relaxing for you. Must be the last session of the day today. Okay. So I basically write in Odia, but there are few translations, and this is my book in translation. Two more shabd in Hindi. So I'll be reading few poems, basically, you know, with asserted feelings. Uh, I'll start with a small poem of, uh, you know, what else but love. The Sirshak hai is ki mantra. Tum kehte the, pyar syar, bekar ki baate hain. Teen pe ghuizki ke baad, de hi hai sab. Par kaho to, kesa lagta, agar us deh par prem ka ek halka sa lep chada hota, तुम्हारी बाहों में अंधेरे में हिरनी की आंखों के फसफरस सा वह जगमग करता अगर सब कुछ मानसूर चमड़ी की होती खून की ये लपलपाती आग ओस की अनगिनत बूंदों से जनवरी की ठिठुरन भरी रातों से या झरझर बेमौसम बरसात से बिना बुझे जलती सिर्फ होता चमड़ी और मांस का सांवला पसीना तुम्हारा जी भर पीने के बाद कहाँ से लौट आती प्यास सात समुंदर की प्रेम अगर कुछ भी नहीं उस सांझ नदी किनारे क्यों पूछा था बार बार कहो तो कौन लग रहा है सबसे अच्छा मैं या ये सुहानी सांझ या कि नदी का ये किनारा थैंक यू well, another poem of Inheritance of Love and Pain. Sirshak hai, Maa Beti ki Baat Chit. Itne saare nishan kiyo hai maa, tere badan par? Kya bataun beti? Har nishan ka ek ek itihaas hai, guzra hai jo mere badan se, man se, aur piche chhoda hai andheri surang se. Ye jo सबसे गहरा निशान दिख रही है मेरी बाएं भुओं पर तब का है जब मैं थी तेरी जैसी थी बेहद डरपोक चेहरे पर कोई निशान ना बन जाए तभी हर रोज जलाए करती थी सांझावती चोरे पर कहूँ या ना कहूँ बेटी कहूँ या ना कहूँ बेटी प्यार करना इतना पैना होता है कि काट डालता है हृदय छोड़ जाता है एक निशान कभी कभी इतनी जल्द की सांस लेने तक भी फुर्सत नहीं मिल पाती थैंक यू अगेन अनदर पोएम ऑन रिलेशनशिप दिस टाइम इट इज लवलेसनेस हमारे रिश्ता पानी की बुलबुले को भी पकड़ कर रखा जा सकता है 
लकीर खींची जा सकती है बहती नदी की धार पर उत्ताल पवन को कैद कर सकती हूँ मुट्ठी में पर क्या हमारा रिश्ता था मेरे बस से बाहर एक लहर तक छोड़ न सका जो युगों से इकट्ठी रेत के ढूँ पर दूर पहाड़ सा रहस्य भरा है तुम्हारे कंधा अशोक की ऊपरी टहनी पर खिलते फूल की तरह तुम्हारी मुस्कान मेरे पूरा बदन में बेले की महक दो डग सख्त माटी के जिद मटकी भर शहद बांटने की इच्छा मिलावट तो नहीं थी किसी में कैसे सूख गया वह चमत्कारी गोंद जो जोड़ रखता है दुनिया की सारी युगवता को दुनिया की सारी युगमताओं को माटी से पानी को फूल से तितली को मन से आत्मा को यहाँ तक कि एकटक देखने से रत्ती भर चिपका हुआ मिलता है टकले ग्राहक और उससे लहटी बेशा की बीच की भाव साव से एक बुन तक नहीं पा सके हम अरसे से नाव पर सवार डूबते उतराते पके हुए अलग अलग सपनों के समुंदर में well now a uh, bit of my reaction to the uh, social scene uh, the way sudhir sudeep uh, read about um, uh, climate change this is regarding uh, the kisan mein sirsak hai basmati ke aansu basmati is basmati chawal uh, tears of basmati rice basmati ke aansu bade dhum dham se भोज भात का आयोजन है मिश्र जी के यहाँ बड़े बेटी के शादी में शहर के सबसे नामी गिरामी होटल में है खाना पीना पचास से ज़्यादा पकवान बंद नहीं हो रही विदेशी शराब की धार एक थाली की दर कहते हैं दो हज़ार में तय हुआ था तीन हज़ार मेहमान किस किस को ना बुलाएं टोला पड़ोस कुटुम्ब बचपन के साथी मंत्री संतरी या दूर के रिश्तेदार देखो किसी अनहोनी हुई हांडी भर बासमती पानी बन बह गई रसोई से रोते हुए बासमती कह रही थी अभी अभी खबर आई है हरि नायक की कितने प्यार से राधी रात में रोपा था मुझे सहला था धान की बालियां और फुस फुसा कर कह रहा था देखना इस साल मेरा बोझा उतर जाएगा जैसी महक रही हो, हो ना तू बयाना देकर उठा ले जाएंगे तुझे एक से बढ़कर एक मालदार साठ हजार भला होता है कितना सुबह के अखबार में गर्मा गर्म दो खबरें मिश्रा जी के बेटे की शादी में साठ लाख का भोज भात बर्बाद हो गया सारा का सारा बासमती का भात पानी बन बह गया नो गांव का किसान हरि नायक साठ हजार चुका न पाकर कीटनाशक पी गया my last poem again uh, a reaction to you know on women sirshak hai saadi saadhe 5 meter ki maryada se maine khud ko lapet liya hai aur apni garima mein khud ulajh rahi hu yaad nahi kabhi ye maryada kisi se haath pasar kar mangi thi ya jabran khinch layi thi ya kisi ki lal aankhon ka ishara tha या था सपनों में खोए उस नौजवान का घबराया सा पहला उपहार अपने पहनावे की महिमा बखन रही थी मेरी दूसरी बहनें अपने मन मुताबिक सुविधा सरल स्वच्छंद ऐसे कुछ शब्दों की जामिति पर मैं चुप थी कैसे समझाती उन्हें कि मेरा परिधान आध्यात्मिक है रात को घर लौटकर नाप नूप कर उस साड़ी के कई टुकड़े किए और हर टुकड़े को मंत्र पढ़ पढ़ कर उड़ा दिया एक टुकड़ा एक टुकड़ा उस कबाड़ बटोरने वाली औरत के फटे घाघरे में पैबंद लगाने के लिए एक बलात्कार के बाद गांव की अमराई में फेंके गए नंगे शव को ढकने के लिए एक बड़े अस्पताल के वंस वार्ड में 
दहेज न लाने वाली नई नबेली के लिए रखे दस नंबर बेड की चादर बनाने को आखिरी टुकड़ा पांच सितारा होटल में पांच ग्राहकों को शराब परोसने वाली लड़की की इतनी सी छोटे बक्श बंधन में सिले जाने के लिए सुबह देखा सारे टुकड़े लौट आए हैं सुबह देखा सारे टुकड़े लौट आए हैं फिर से जुड़कर मुझे सिर से पाँव तक ढकने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं मेरे पेट छाती और पीठ का मेरे पेट छाती और पीठ का तब भी कुछ हिस्सा दिख रहा है इतनी लंबी साड़ी भी जिसे छिपाने को कम पड़ रही है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू परमिता जी Our third poet tonight is uh, Devendra Pisaria. We'll be reading from his first book of poems, "You and Others," which was launched at the Singapore Writers Festival last November. The book is a collection of poems written between ages 15 and 38. I can't believe you are over 38 years old. <laughs> and presented as they were written without alteration. Born in India, Devendra is a Singaporean with a 30-year career in international banking. He's also a photographer with several solo exhibitions to his credit. Devendra, the stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, this is the book. This is why I'm here. First of all, before I start, I just want to say how I stand here in awe and feeling very humble in this illustrious, in the middle of this illustrious group of people. This is my first endeavor. Uh, I'm very pleased to see so many young people here. That's a photograph I took of myself when I was 15 years old. Uh, as he read out the poems here, I started writing around 15, 16, and at the age of 38, I stopped and I have not written a word. So, for the young people, there is stuff here that is relevant to you because there's a lot here which I wrote when I was your age. Uh, through this time, a couple of things I'll just mention. I have a couple of very strong. So this book is my autobiography. It's uh, it's my history. About history, I have a couple of very strong beliefs. One is that, given the world we live in, there is a moral obligation and a onus on each and every one of us to preserve the integrity and truth of our own personal histories. Otherwise, you can get swept away in the revision of collective history. I have tried to do that. I keep true to what has happened in the past. The other thing related to history is time itself, the past, the present, and the future. It's a cliche that what we are today is a summation of our past, but what we take to the future, there are choices to be made. You can decide what you want to take with you into the future or not, which leads me into my first poem. It's a short one. It's called Antithesis, and I'm hoping that it will appeal to Kalaji here. There is neither future nor past. I am a moment. No memories or fantasies. It is all present. A moment of reflection. See yourself in a teardrop on my cheek. Okay. The the book is called You and Others. The you is a a concept I created probably as a result of several you know. Uh, unrequited adolescent infatuations so i started building this concept of an ideal uh, a person who would one day complete me if i could find that person uh, it's literally just a concept and maybe it's related for those interested there may be a clue in the acknowledgments at the back on why i stopped writing at the age of 38 so it's called u4 there are a series of u poems this is called u4 there is a cry ringing in the valleys of my loins The river that greens them is meandering slowly, seeking a source in the mountains above. So far away, sorry, as far away in the dusk of my eyes, your thought sets, giving hope for a new day's rise. There is a cry ringing from the mountains of my mind, higher than the valleys and cradled to the cotton breast of the clouds in my eyes. Clouds that rain without warning. in the still of the night when the winds have died and thoughts lap gently on the shores of my heart and the mirage of birds 
Winging across the moon are only my lashes at dawn, blinking away a teardrop. Uh, the next one is, so those both were written in my early days. This is towards the end. This was written three years or four years, and there's a hint in this about how old I was at that time. This is written towards the end, and the imagery in this is very fresh. I had just returned home from a diving trip to the Red Sea, so you'll find some of that imagery utilized here. It's called the color of sleep. The color of night is dark, like your hair, and my thoughts, tossed back from brooding brow and sleep. The new lines on my, f the new lines on mine, 35 times deepened by the warm duvet hugs of those darker thoughts. Only in the purple afterglow of long hot summer days, my mind ringed dry of sweat, hair, and lines, do I sleep without a soporific touch. And my dreams then are as fresh as evening sand between my coiled toes. The sun had already set when I peeled, when I peeled your hand off the steering and hold its Red Sea smooth jellyfish moistness till the next gear change. The prelude to fervent lovemaking and peaceful sleep, unknown before and since, although alone, inevitably alone. The color of night is black, with or without sleep, alone or in enfolding flesh. The light in dreams is only Sisyphus's eyes, also dark. The color of sleep is blind. Thank you. The next poem is, well, also written towards uh, the later days, but it's simply about loss. I think we all go through experience loss at some stage in our lives. It's called The Principles of Parting. When we parted, the world stopped turning. Time came to a standstill, and the fire stopped burning. When we parted, rivers stopped flowing, birds stopped singing, and the wind stopped blowing. When we parted, clouds lost their lining, the rain stopped falling, and the sun stopped shining. When we parted, my life lost meaning. Days their purpose, and the nights lost their weaning. When we parted, I stopped writing. Lost my quill and easel, and my poem lost its sighting. And when we parted, beliefs had a new starting. No longer was it impossible to love and then be parting. OK, and as all of us do, through my adolescent years and young years, uh, I did a lot of thinking about death. Uh, I mean, I think uh, you know, misery creates morose thoughts, thought processes. I did a lot of study also of death in various parts of the world, how it's treated, the before death, the after death, and I think the next poem sort of encapsulates my thoughts about death. It's called Sky High 1, and then there's a Sky High 2, which has a subtitle. It's a short one. When I die, look at the sun and laugh without squinting. For I will be drifting across its face on an eagle's wing. Second poem is called Sky High 2, a slow poem. The night of my life dawns, flooding my senses with blackness. Today I died and celebrated with champagne and friends. Death, even on a wing, is slow, as slow as the birth of this poem. And last, depending on how kind Lakshya feels. So, We've talked about death, we've talked about loss, parting, history, future, past. What of after? What about after death? So I have some thoughts about this. Uh, I wrote this poem in college. A very dear friend of mine and I were eating bread pakoras in the mess. He was supposed to be here, but he couldn't make it. Uh, he, I think, had tired of my incess incessant 
readings to him, and in a fit of anger, through a stuffed mouth, he said, oh, really, if you think you're such a hot poet, write a poem for this. And he pointed to a bottle of uh, ketchup sitting on the table. Mind you, in our college, the ketchup was not tomato, it was kaddu. <laughs> okay. So, so, so there is a, so, uh, the poem is called Ode to an Empty Sauce Bottle. But the other thing to just note here is the inversion, you know, the focus is always on the content rather than the receptacle. And that's what philosophy, life, death is all about. I, I've tried to turn the focus to the receptacle instead. Devoid of content, you stand listless, stained and shaken, waiting. Thank you. We're done. <laughs> We're done, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Devendra. Thank you. I just, I know you mentioned that there is a clue to the acknowledgements of the you, but I just want to say, spoiler alert, the U is, uh, has a camera up and she's shooting this video right now. <laughs> so our fourth poet is uh, Kala Ramesh. She is a Pushkart Prize nominated poet, editor and anthologist, the founder of, and director of the Triveni Haikai India and founder and managing editor of Haiku Katha Journal. Author of Haiku for Children, published by Katha Books in 2010, her book of Haiku and Haibun Beyond the Horizon Bound, Beyond, Beyond the Horizon Beyond. You can tell it's day four of my moderation. Uh, published by <laughs> Vishwakarma Publications, was shortlisted for the Ramindranath Tagore Literary Prize in 2019. Her third book, The Forest I Know, was published by HarperCollins in July 2021. A speaker at the International Haiku Conferences, Kala received the We Trails Trailblazer Poet Teacher Award 2020 from Women Empowered India. Kalaji, the stage is yours. Thank you. At the outset, I must say, haiku poets don't see such huge audiences. <laughs> we are in our own world, closed up, almost underground, and we do a lot of work. We get our poems published, we help each other, we workshop, we do uh, uh, publish, uh, uh, and we are editors, we do everything. So having this exposure is huge. And thank you so much to each one of you who are here today. Um, I will be reading a, around five or six haiku, which is hardly two seconds each. And then I would be reading haibun, which is Bun means sentences, and hai comes from the haikai word. So it's uh, sentences, short, precise, uh, tight sentences, haikai prose with, embedded with haiku. And then I'll be reading one or two tanka, which is five line poems, and then sendryu, which should bring a smile onto your faces as I end my presentation. Um, it is about the idiosyncrasies of human beings. So I start off with haiku. Thunder clap. Thunder clap. The darkening sky splits. Thunder clap. The darkening sky splits into liquid night. Coming of frost. Without any fuss. The end of a yellow leaf. Coming of frost without any fuss, the end of a yellow leaf. Thank you. The year passes. The year passes. The stones on the pathway only get deeper. This is my shortest poem, just six words, and it was published in one of the renowned uh, haiku journal, The Heron's Nest, and it got uh, uh, a favorite uh, reader's award for it. Rainforest, the lives. Rainforest, the lives 
I step on. Wild bamboo, the penciled darkness shimmers in rain. Wild bamboo, the penciled darkness shimmers in rain. Plucked jasmine, plucked jasmine, a funeral on my hands. Plucked jasmine, a funeral on my hands. I don't know how many of you will get this poem in first or second read. It is all the other things that you can think of, but my intention was that every time we pluck a flower, whether we put it in my hair, or I put it in a vase, or whether I put it on the puja, it is preparing its funeral. It's because it's going to die by the end of the day. On a plant, it might have lived for a few days more. Plucked jasmine, a funeral on my hands. Mountain trek, my steps ringed with bird song. Mountain trek, my steps ringed with bird song. The ocean in a raindrop inside my womb, a heart. The ocean in a raindrop, the ocean in a raindrop inside my womb, a heart. Just two tanka now. I gather one moon after another into my hands. I gather one moon after another into my hands. The river keeps giving. I spend months learning to tune my instrument. I spend months learning to tune my instrument. A fakir down the street is one with his ektara. Thank you. I spend months learning to tune my instrument. A fakir down the street is one with his ektara. I now come to a very short haibun, which is prose embedded with haiku. Aditya, the sun god. I get away from the crowd onto the top of a hill. On the other side is the peacock valley where I see retired men sitting in groups, chatting their idle hours away. A young couple pass by me. Suddenly, she stops midway, pulling his sleeves, saying, look, look, how beautiful. I see a copper red plate swiveling as it slips downward. Sheer vibrancy envelops the entire lake below in burning oranges and reds. A sacred moment, a sacred moment, this twilight. Perfect because it's neither day nor night, neither light nor darkness. And without a double, it has come to stay in my mind. String of jasmine, the haiku follows. String of jasmine, her plait in step with her hips. String of jasmine, her plait in step with her hips. The next haiku. After the prose comes the haiku, which is linked and shipped to the haiku. And that is the beauty of that uh, aesthetic nuance that Japanese has given us. And we follow it a lot. In, when we write our poems. Autumn's depth, I hug Amma. Her back has been paining her, yet her sm she smiles through the pain. I am reminded of the red brick wall in our yard, now parched of rain, cracking under the Chennai summer. When I was young, she always said that she would love to grow old gracefully. But now, I wonder, does it mean dyeing one's hair and having a facelift to seem young? Or does it mean going with the flow, aging like the stars in the sky, accepting that helping hand 
and holding onto the rails when climbing up the stairs. The huge bronze bell rings in autumn's depth. Hill Temple. Thank you. Into the future. Yeah? 30, 40 seconds. Pardon? 30 seconds. OK, then I will just. Uh, <clears throat> I'll come on to the Senju. Loud music. The entire neighborhood knows her son is back. A meeting after years, she thinks I'm dying to know her story. A meeting after years, she thinks I'm dying to know her story. Insomnia, one pain wakes up the other. Insomnia, one pain wakes up the other. Inside the escalator, stomachs promptly pulled in. All around mirrors. Inside the escalator, stomachs promptly pulled in. All around mirrors. Playing ball with my grandson, Playing ball with my grandson, my back goes for a toss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kalaji. Our final poet, uh, I want to make sure he gets his time, so I apologize if you, we go a couple minutes over time. I hope the Bear Tuck team and the volunteers don't mind. Jitendra Kumar Soni is an IS officer, multilingual writer and translator. He writes in both Hindi and Rajasthani, and his poems include Umido Ke Chirag and Rankhar. He's also written a collection of short stories titled Adios, Dhai Akhar Ki Dhai Kahaniya, and, and has edited Kavita Paraspar and Shabdo Ki Seep. Sony has translated Mari Panti Ra Pana. <laughs> Meri Rajasthani class. Rajasthan, Rajasthan ki jameen pe Rajasthani ka ye jo shabd hai, wo mahari panti ra paana hai. So, uh, I'll continue. Uh, Rajasthani translation of Punjabi poems of Har Haribhajan Singh Benu Renu, Nirvana, Hindi translation of Manmohan Singh's novel, and Dhera Mai Aje Ogai Har Mara Runk. Thik hai? Thank you. <laughs> Rajasthani translation of short stories of Ruskin Bond, among others. He has been honored with the Sahitya Academy Yuva Puraskar, the Kaka Kalekar Rashtriya Protsahan Samman 2021, and also the Uttam Jeevan Raksha Padak for saving eight lives in the flood of 2016. Jitendra Ji, stage is yours. Thank you so much, Laksha Ji. But when you were reading, I thought that now the question has become a big question that इस जमीन पर हम खड़े हैं गुलाबी नगर में तो राजस्थानी मुझे लगता है एक भरे पूरे शहर में एक हरा भरा बाग है जिसको बचाने की हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं तो यहाँ बैठे हुए लोगों में जिसको राजस्थानी समझ में आती है एक बार प्लीज बताएं ठीक है मैं एक 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 कविता राजस्थानी में पढूंगा और उसके बाद तीन कविताएं हिंदी की हैं और लक्ष्य जी से मेरा रिक्वेस्ट ये है कि अभी ऑलरेडी ये दो मिनट बता रहा है तो उसको आप प्लीज ध्यान रखें कविता का शीर्षक है इंकलाब मारी झुंपड़ियारी भूख मैं इसका हिंदी ट्रांसलेशन भी करूंगा साथ में मारी झुंपड़ियारी भूख जद तोड़ रसोनल किवाड़ मैला बड़ेली तो भेड़ देवली थारी रजवाड़ी खेती मारी झुंपड़ियारी भूख जद तोड़ रसोनल किवाड़ मैला बड़ेली तो भेड़ देवली थारी रजवाड़ी खेती नाक बैमता उघाड़ा टाबर थारे मखमली कालीना पर गट्टा रोली रमेला थारे जंप खावते चीकने सोफा पर खुरदरा डोकरा ढेरियो कातेला और ग्रेज माय बंदेला मारा ढोर इन 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 ऑपरेशन पछे मैं जावाला पाछा मारी खुदरी ठोड़ पण छोड़ जावाला थारे मेला माय चुल्ले रो स्वाद और पसीने री सोरम मैं इसका हिंदी ट्रांसलेशन पढ़ता हूं कविता का शीर्षक है इंकलाब हमारी झोंपड़ियों की भूख जिस दिन तोड़कर ये तुम्हारे बड़े सुनहरे एक दरवाजे तुम्हारे महलों में घुसेगी तो इकट्ठा समेट कर रख देगी तुम्हारे राजशाही ठाट पाठ नाक बहते हुए 
नाक बहते हुए ये नंगे बदन वाले बच्चे तुम्हारे मखमली कालीनों पर उछल कूद करेंगे और तुम्हारे चिकने सोफों पर हमारे बुजुर्ग बैठकर ढेरिया काते हैं गांवों में ढेरिया कातेंगे और तुम्हारे गैरेज में हम बांधेंगे हमारे पशु और इतना करने के बाद रुकेंगे नहीं हम चले जाएंगे वापस पर छोड़ जाएंगे तुम्हारे महलों में पसीने का स्वाद चूल्हे का स्वाद और पसीने की खुशबू थैंक यू हिंदी में है कविता शीर्षक है पसीना और शब्द यदि तुम्हारे शब्द यदि तुम्हारे शब्द लुहार के मुंह में रखे नमक के ढेले से गले में उतरते कड़वेपन यदि तुम्हारे शब्द लुहार के मुंह में रखे नमक के ढेले से गले में उतरते कड़वेपन और धोखनी की आग में रक्त तप्त बिल्कुल खून जैसा लाल हो जाता है लोहा और धोखनी की आग में रक्त तप्त हो चुके लोहे से आगे निकलकर और धोखनी की आग में रक्त तप्त होकर लोहे से रक्त तप्त हो चुके लोहे से आगे निकलकर विरोध की तपिश विरोध की तपिश आलोचनाओं का खारापन झेलकर बुन सकते हैं कविता विरोध की तपिश आलोचनाओं का खारापन झेलकर बुन सकते हैं कविता तो यकीनन तो यकीनन तुम्हारे पसीने का स्वाद तो यकीनन तुम्हारे पसीने का स्वाद लोहार के पसीने जैसा होगा तो यकीनन तुम्हारे पसीने का स्वाद लोहार के पसीने जैसा होगा वरना वरना ना तो हर नमकीन पानी वरना ना तो हर नमकीन पानी पसीना होता है और ना ही तुरपे गए शब्द कविता होती है तुरपे गए शब्द कविता Uh, कविता का शीर्षक है मरता हुआ आदमी uh, मैं इससे पहले uh, अभी जैसे नागौर जिला है राजस्थान में वहाँ डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर था अभी मैं एमडी एनएचएम के पद पे काम कर रहा हूँ ये ट्रॉमा सेंटर बने होते हैं हर बड़े हॉस्पिटल में ट्रॉमा सेंटर का जो डॉक्टर होता है मुझे लगता है वो वो बहुत ही मजबूत इंसान होता है वो कितने सारे एक्सीडेंट्स में जो घायल आते हैं इंजर्ड लोग आते हैं उनको देखता है उनका ट्रीटमेंट करता है कई मौके पर उनकी डेथ भी हो जाती है वो जब आदमी मर रहा होता है उसके सबसे नज़दीक डॉक्टर होता है उसके ऊपर कविता है कि मरते हुए आदमी के सामने क्या चीज़ें होती हैं कि मरता हुआ आदमी शीर्षक है इसका दुर्घटना के बाद दुर्घटना के बाद अस्पताल के ट्रॉमा सेंटर में तमाम चिकित्सकीय कोशिशों के बाद दुर्घटना के बाद अस्पताल के ट्रॉमा सेंटर में तमाम चिकित्सकीय कोशिशों के बाद मर रहे आदमी को देख सोचता हूँ मर रहे आदमी को देख सोचता हूँ कि प्रतिपल चिर निद्रा की तरफ बढ़ता हुआ यह आदमी प्रतिपल चिर निद्रा की तरफ बढ़ता हुआ आदमी अपनी बची खुची सांसों से अपनी बची खुची सांसों से कहाँ सोच पा रहा होगा बची खुची सांसों से कहाँ सोच पा रहा होगा मजहबी द्वंद्व जीवन में कैसा भी रहा हो जब मर रहा होता है उसके पास इसका इसका समय नहीं है कहाँ सोच पा रहा होगा मजहबी द्वंद्व व्यावसायिक चातुर्य सिरमोरी का विवाद और दम्भ दुदुम्बियाँ मतलब ईगो क्लैशिस दम्ब दुदुम्बियाँ क्यों कर याद आ रहा होगा क्यों कर याद आ रहा होगा किसी दुश्मन का चेहरा उसके घूमे गए स्थान मिली हुई तमाम उपलब्धि पत्र और मेडल घर की सारी महंगी सजावटी भौतिक चीज़ें मरता हुआ आदमी असफल कोशिशें कर रहा है वह मरता हुआ आदमी असफल कोशिशें कर रहा है डॉक्टर और नर्सों को बताने की मगर शब्द स्पष्ट नहीं हैं चेहरे पर ना बता पाने का दर्द है हाथ उठता है उसका बस रह रहकर हाथ उठता है उसका बस रह रहकर बहुत कम बचे हुए क्षणों में बहुत कम बचे हुए क्षणों में केवल अपनों को एक बार छूने केवल अपनों को एक बार छूने गले लगाने लाड प्यार स्नेह सम्मान दिखाने की अतृप्त इच्छा बचती है तनाव अवरोध विरोध अहम छोटा बड़ा सब हट जाता है मर रहा आदमी मर रहा आदमी दर्द टीस मलाल कसक के बीच भी जिंदगी के पाठ का 
मर रहा आदमी दर्द टीस कसक मलाल के बीच भी जिंदगी के पाठ का एक निर्दोष सफा सा है पन्ना निर्दोष सफा सा है जिसे पढ़कर मिट सकते हैं कई दुनिया के वहम जब जीवन का अंत दिख रहा हो जब जीवन का अंत दिख रहा हो तो प्राथमिकताएं बदल जाती हैं जब जीवन का अंत दिख रहा हो तो प्राथमिकताएं बदल जाती हैं क्योंकि जब आदमी मरता है क्योंकि जब आदमी मरता है तो बहुत कुछ साथ मर जाता है बहुत कुछ साथ मर जाता है एक एक अंतिम कविता है शीर्षक है इसका बहन मैं मैं राजस्थान के एक बहुत छोटे से गांव का रहने वाला हूं और उस वक्त पुराना एक ब्लैक एंड वाइट फोटो है जिसमें मेरी बड़ी बहन उसने मेरे कंधे पे ऐसे हाथ रख रखा है और अभी अभी वो इस दुनिया में नहीं है तो भांजा और भांजी हैं तो उसके ऊपर मैंने लिखा है एक बहन शीर्षक से कविता है बहन आज तेरी बरसी पर बहन आज तेरी बरसी पर बचपन की फोटो में देखकर मेरे कंधों पर हाथ तुम्हारा बहन आज तेरी बरसी पर बचपन की फोटो में देखकर मेरे कंधों पर हाथ तुम्हारा इतना ही कहूँगा भीगे मन से इतना ही कहूँगा भीगे मन से कि तुम चिंता मत करना अपने बच्चों की परवरिश की कि तुम चिंता मत करना अपने बच्चों की परवरिश की पता है ना तुम्हें पता है ना तुम्हें कि मामा में पता है ना तुम्हें कि मामा में दो बार मामा आता है मामा में दो बार मामा आता है देखना तुम ऊपर से देखना तुम ऊपर से अपने कलेजे के टुकड़ों को देखना तुम ऊपर से अपने कलेजे के टुकड़ों को कितने बड़े हो गए हैं ना और अब तो मेरे कंधों और कानों से भी ऊपर निकलने की जिद में हैं बाकी सब ठीक है यहाँ बाकी सब ठीक है यहाँ माँ तो बुढ़ाई गई थी तेरे जाते ही माँ तो बुढ़ाई गई थी तेरे जाते ही अब भी अब भी रसोई में घुसते निकलते अब भी रसोई में घुसते निकलते रो लेती है दीवार पर लगे टंगे तेरे फोटो को देखकर अब भी रसोई में घुसते निकलते रो लेती है दीवार पर लगे तेरे फोटो को देख और कम और कम गैस चूल्हे की वजह से और कम गैस चूल्हे की वजह से आँख में धुएं वाला ढंका बहाना भी नहीं बना पाती है और कम गैस चूल्हे की वजह से आँख में धुएं वाला ढंका बहाना ही नहीं बना पाती है मैं भी ठीक हूँ मैं भी ठीक हूँ पर किसी की भी विदाई नहीं देख पाता हूँ त्यौहारों और छुट्टियों में तुम्हें ससुराल से लाने की इच्छा अब कसक बन गई है हाथ सुने हैं मन फीका है मगर दुनियादारी और वक्त का तकाजा है कि काम और फर्ज सारे निभा रहा हूं और क्या बताऊं तेरी बरसी पर तेरी कुछ एक सहेलियों के बच्चे तो शादी के लायक हो गए हैं तेरी कुछ एक सहेलियों के तो बच्चे शादी के लायक हो गए हैं उन्हें ये सोचकर मिलता हूं उन्हें ये सोचकर मिलता हूं कि मेरी बहन ने जरूर कुछ लम्हे इनके साथ हंसे ठठाए थे कि मेरी बहन ने जरूर कुछ लम्हे इनके साथ हंसे ठठाए ठठाए थे और तलाश था हूँ उनमें वह चेहरा जिसने बचपन में कितनी बार तलाशता हूँ उनमें वह चेहरा उनकी सहेलियों में तलाशता हूँ उनमें वह चेहरा जिसने बचपन में कितनी बार फूंक मार मार कर ठंडा करके रोटी खिलाई थी मुझे फूंक मार मार कर ठंडा कर रोटी खिलाई थी मुझे जो ले लेती थी मेरे हिस्से की डांट अपने सिर पर जो ले लेती थी मेरे हिस्से की डांट अपने सिर पर और अड़ जाती थी लड़ जाती थी सबसे एक बात पूछूँ तुमसे एक बात पूछूँ तुमसे सच सच बताना तुम्हें भाई की भीगी आंखें दिखाई नहीं देती हैं तुम्हें भाई की भीगी आंखें दिखाई नहीं देती हैं कि पहुंच दो आकर इन्हें एक बार माँ अपने मन की बात किसी से नहीं कह पाती है माँ अपने मन की बात किसी से नहीं कह पाती है कि बतिया लूँ उससे एक बार बच्चे तो अब भी बच्चे तो अब भी किताब फिल्म या कहीं भी माँ को देख छोटा सा मुँह कर लेते हैं कि हंसा दूँ इन्हें एक बार लिपटा लूँ इन्हें सीने से एक बार बहन बहन देखना ऊपर से अगर हो सके तो बहन देखना ऊपर से अगर हो सके तो कि तेरा जाना एक दुनिया का जाना है तेरा जाना एक दुनिया का जाना है फोटुओं पर पड़ी हुई मालाएं, फोटुओं पर पड़ी हुई मालाएं सचमुच बहुत वजनी होती हैं फोटुओं पर पड़ी हुई मालाएं सचमुच बहुत वजनी होती हैं हम सबके दिलों पर भी हम सबके दिलों पर भी एक पत्थर की मानिंद 
हम सबके दिलों पर भी एक पत्थर की मानिंद धरी हुई है तेरी फोटो पर लगी माला भी तेरी फोटो पर लगी माला भी थैंक यू सो मच अरे थैंक यू कैन वी कीप द अपलॉज गोइंग फॉर ऑल आर अमेजिंग पोइट्स हेयर टूडे एंड फॉर द एंटायर टीम ऑफ बैठक फॉर होस्टिंग अस फॉर फोर डेज थैंक यू टू ऑल द वॉलंटियर्स थैंक यू फॉर कमिंग See you next year at Poetry Hour 2023. Thank you, Mr. Sudeep Sain, Paramita Satpathi, Devendra Bisaria, Kala Ramesh, Jitendra Singh, Jitendra Kumar Soni, and Lakshmi Dattaji.